afternoon, everyone. Welcome to All Hands on Deck, the podcast built for We the People. Opportunities here to bring your grassroots and authentic groups along uh, to the podcast and explain to the world what you're doing, why you're doing it, where you're at, what help do you need? Or are you someone working within the movement to support others? Are you here to help provide ways forward for other people? Because if you are, then get in contact and we'll provide a platform for you. So today I'm joined by, by Roberto Chatwin. From what was until today, COVID positive news. We're now moving over. I love the new name, Conscience, Conscious People's Network. And Rabito, who is a hypnotherapist, very kindly um, offering support and sessions to people within the truth and freedom movement and those who are vaccine injured. Um, so I'm delighted to introduce Rabito today. He's going to come along and uh, tell us a little bit about what he's doing, what Conscious People's Movement's all about. And uh, we're going to talk a little bit about waking up and what that looks like and maybe how we can help other people. So hello. Thank you for joining me today. Thank you. I'm very happy to be here. Delight to have you, my friend. Um, right. Can you tell me first just a little bit about this name change and uh, maybe why you've chosen to, to change the name? Yeah, so I started COVID Positive News in January last year, and it was basically, there was an article published by The Pulse, and it was about how Japan had decided that they weren't going to discriminate between whether people wanted to have a vaccine or not. And, uh, and I just thought, that's that's just such good news when everybody is just kind of being bombarded with doom and gloom. Uh, and I shared it with a few friends and realized that it wasn't good news for everybody. Those people that were pro vaccine thought that it's very, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's an inappropriate article or whatever. And then, uh, yeah, anyway, so, uh, so then I decided I actually asked a friend whether he thought it'd be good for me to just create a channel on Telegram called COVID Positive News and just start posting some of the positive news. And he said, yes, my girlfriend said, yes, go for it. And that's how it started. And um, I already had, a, um, I teach critical thinking every summer at a UK uni. And, uh, and I already have looked into the science behind positive, positive psychology and also constructive journalism and solutions focused journalism. So the benefits of focusing on the glass half full. So I took that as the idea and I just kept posting positive posts about what was going on over the last kind of, well, at that, at now it's like two years, but just over two years. Um, but also I was putting into the posts, like what the benefits are of, of focusing on the solutions and focusing on the positive. And I had loads of positive feedback, lots of people writing back saying that it was really helping them in these times that they, that they'd, they could breathe again was a, a kind of a common comment. Um, and then I had people contacting me and saying, cause I was doing some like uh, meditation and hypnosis sessions through the, through the channel as well. Um, and then people were contacting me and saying, oh, well, I, I, I can do this and I do this and I do this. So then we ended up creating a kind of a um, called the CPN Mentors. It was just a network of people offering sessions. And we still do that today. There's free daily sessions every day on the channel. Amazing. Um, and then we started working as a team. So then it was like, OK, what do we want to do with the channel? Um and then I just literally almost burnt out really at the end of last year because I was just doing, I mean, I was basically running the, the, the main part of the channel myself. Um, and then at the, around the same time, kind of COVID kind of ended for now and uh, all the restrictions started to ease away for most of the countries. And so it kind of fell at a point where I was exhausted anyway. So it gave me time to have a bit of a break Anyway, and then we talked about it and we were thinking on a name and we decided on the Conscious People's Network. And the idea, I mean, we also said right from the beginning, uh, we're all mentors. You know, we've all got something to offer. We're all the heroes in this story. We're all the ones that we're waiting for. And so I had the idea that uh, I, I, I wanted to start doing a podcast myself. So I've just started interviewing people myself. And the idea was that everybody that is interviewed, then I can just explain 
basically just the footer and how to do the title and then the content of every post people can share into the into the channel whatever they want to share and uh, and then it becomes the conscious people's network so then it's just everybody sharing into the channel what they're doing and um, and it's really open to everyone and the only reason that I kind of decided and it might change but the only reason that I decided that I would interview them first is just so that I can just check that you know we're on the same wavelength and that we see we see things similarly which is that as we've talked about before no hierarchy and we're all in this together absolutely absolutely no fantastic and where can people find this this is on telegram am i right yeah so it's a telegram channel and we're keeping it at covid positive news for now because covid positive news has become quite well known and uh, and so basically if someone clicks at covid positive news it they, it will lead them to the conscious people's network so it fits quite nicely, really, because COVID positive news is the conscious people's network. Um, yeah. yeah. Fantastic. Fantastic. Now, just uh, before we go on to kind of looking again at, at, at people waking up and what solutions are there, what role can we play and so forth? Because this has become, I think, an integral part of what 2023 looks like um, personally. But we can go into that in a minute. What I just want to do is um, I know until recently I had some preconceived ideas about what hypnotherapy was, how that worked, you know, a little bit anxious about it, to be honest, because I'd heard, you know, it is a way of controlling people and so forth. Now, and since then, I've become enlightened and I understand the massive benefits that are involved with that. But you as a hypnotherapist, do you want to just give a brief overview for those that may carry around preconceived ideas about what hypnotherapy is about? Because I know you've got so much to offer and I want people to understand what it is you're looking to offer, what it is you got, you, you do um, and how they might benefit from it. So we can start shifting any mindsets where there is a bit of uncertainty or concern. Yeah, sure. So, well, hip, so the first thing is hypnotherapy is kind of a deep meditation, really. It's basically focusing on the present. So I always talk about it as brainwave states. And not only do I talk about it as brainwave states, there's studies out there also that say that the hypnagogic state is falls into the theta brainwave state. So you've got beta is the thinking mind. That's where we normally are. That's the active thinking brainwave state. And then it makes sense that the more that we relax, the, the, the more that the, the, the brain activity slows down. So a slower brainwave movement is alpha. And alpha is when we're playing a musical instrument, when we're reading, when we're swimming, when we're meditating, when we, when we have to focus on the present moment to do an activity, then we go into the alpha. And the reason that meditation is so beneficial or any type of focusing on the present moment is actually really in, interesting in and of itself because there's a part of the brain called the default mode network which lights up when we're going into the future or going into the past. And usually because of negativity bias, we worry about the future or we regret the past. Some people say that that's actually a kind of a biological instinct from survival when we were in the past, you know, looking for food and things like this to survive. But actually, there's there's tribes out there that don't have uh, any language for the past or the future. And there's, there, there's one tribe, I always forget the name, called the Prahaya, Praha, Prahaha, I'm not sure, tribe. Anyway, they're supposed to be the happiest tribe in the world. And they stay very much in the present. So it's also arguable that it's not a natural state, but and we're programmed to go into the negative. But anyway, when we focus on the present, the default mode network shuts down because we're not activating it. And then as a consequence, it reduces anxiety, it reduces depression, it reduces. So it's very simple to explain that. And then the hypnagogic state is just the next one down. So beta, alpha, theta and delta is sleep. And theta is more relaxed. So you get really close to the sleep state, which means you start to, to get a, a more direct connection to your subconscious. And then you still need to focus. So to go into the present, you, yeah, to go into the present, you need to focus. So in, hypno, in hypnotherapy, you focus on the, on the hypnotherapist, on the voice. And then the, hypno, the hypnosis part is the relaxing, 
or letting go or surrendering or trusting. And the more that somebody can relax, surrender or trust and let go, the more that you can sink into this state. And that's all it is. So when people have a problem with meditation or hypnosis, you know, it's like, is there really any demons involved if you're looking at a tree and watching the, the branches move, you know, it's, it, or playing a musical instrument? It's just, just focus on the present and then we get connected to the, to the subconscious. I've got to admit, I, I, I had some preconceived ideas and um, it, it was actually a huge mistake on my part. And I almost feel like I, I had spoken to you and knew you before because um, what, what I've gained now from, from understanding and going through the process a bit more is um, the huge relaxation was such a shock. I thought I would not know what I was saying or not necessarily know what was being said to me or understand how I was responding not at all totally far from it but it it was I was able to get to a place that I don't think I'd easily have ever got to on my own um and it was just being guided there so I effectively I was the one in control I was the one doing whatever I had to do but I was just being gu guided and supported so I wasn't alone and, and there was something very comforting about it as well actually um but yeah I, I would encourage anybody uh, to look into it and consider it. And maybe if they're interested, contact you, Rabito, and, and have a chat with you because it isn't anything like we've been told on the TV or, or, or you know, maybe read in magazines and so forth. And actually, I think it's going to have a massive place in moving forward how we deal potentially with trauma or, or, or stress or, or things like that that we see here now. And I think we'll probably... For a little while get a little bit worse maybe and uh we're gonna need to have again all hands on deck to, to help deal with that and i think your way is, is is incredible in terms of people waking up um there's obviously phases to the wake waking up i mean i wrote something uh, a number of years ago um uh, when i knew there was going to be this massive awakening and the way i had looked at it was like the stages of grief um you know you go through the you know no denial 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 you know you go through these stages sim similar similar to grief but how do you see it and how do we recognize it and then more importantly how do we navigate supporting people as they wake up have you got any thoughts on this yeah yeah well first of all well so if i can just jump to the second part first which is you know how do we navigate support in this because i i also would like to mention something that you mentioned about the hypnosis and the you know like it's manipulation mind control so a big part of uh, dealing with this is we can go in many different directions, but basically we've been in an abusive relationship. That's the way I see it. We've been in an abusive relationship with the system. And when you look at an abusive relationship, um, there's always periods of calm and chaos. And it's actually that period of calm where we know that the chaos is coming again where we go into the fear, we go into the worry, and we go into the despair. And so um, for us to get out of an abusive relationship, the first thing we need to do is acknowledge that we're in one. And then after we've acknowledged that we're in one, then we need to process it. And one way to process it is to talk about it. Um, another part of it that's really important is to find allies or a community, people that you can talk to about it. And the final part is to um, set your own boundaries and then walk away. So, you know, as with what the PHA is doing and the PFFA, we need to walk away from the abusers and stop giving them our attention anymore. They're just not relevant to us anymore just like in, a, in an abusive relationship one-on-one -on -one, the only solution is to walk away you can't convince the abuser to be nicer or hope that things will change you you have to walk away and create a better reality for yourself so how that links in with hypnosis is that the first part of hypnosis the reason that it's so powerful for trauma and ptsd and things like that is because it's releasing that stress. It's releasing that internal stress that we've collected and stored over time because we've been in this traumatic um, relationship, this traumatic extended period of time. 
And so when we release that stress, um, and then the other part of it is, is then going into specifics about we can get inner guidance, we can find the key to something that needs to kind of change or switch so that we can, everything else falls into place. But the initial thing is just let's get rid of that stress. And that, that release of stress helps people with so many different things that it's really difficult for, I mean, that's why I think people also perhaps don't understand or why hypnosis isn't so widely um, thought of like meditation or Reiki and things like that, because it can help with so many different things. Because when you release that stress, any psychosomatic condition, anything that is stress related can disappear. So the list of the different things that can be, um, you know, helped through clearing out stress is massive. And, um, and that's a big part, I think, of dealing with this is finding a way, it doesn't have to be hypnosis, but finding your way to, to deal, to, to get rid of that stress, to shake out that stress, clear it out. My girlfriend does um, a kind of a dance therapy. It's called intuitive dance. And basically it's, uh, she creates a playlist that takes you on a journey of different rhythms. And the idea, a bit like ecstatic dance, is you, you dance, but you, it, you, you don't pay attention to what anybody else is, is thinking about you. It's about just you. But you sh you're shaking out all your internally stored stress, just like animals do once they've been chased by a lion. So there's lots of different ways to do it. But um, I would say finding a way to get rid of the stress and then finding a community, finding people that understand you. Don't leave, don't, don't try to do it on your own. It's not easy. And in fact, it's almost impossible to do it on your own. You need some support coming from somewhere. This has been one of the beautiful things in terms of the feedback we've had from um, people involved with PHA. Um, it's almost like a Billy bonus to what we're trying to do, because obviously um, the first and foremost was let's get some health hubs out there. Let's get some networking done in terms of the health support that we can get out there. But actually a byproduct of that is groups of people coming together in their community who may not have been in contact, any contact before, didn't even know each other, nothing whatsoever. And they've come together, <clears throat> excuse me, with a mutual goal of creating a hub for their community but what's happened is they've they've created their own support network for each other they're there like-minded people coming together and supporting each other through the last year or so um whereby things have been difficult for them they have been hard they felt alone in their community they haven't had known anyone i could talk to you know everyone's gonna think i'm bonkers and so on and so forth and actually just coming together and creating that support where people naturally talk together, they naturally come up with solutions, they can bounce things off each other, they they have an understanding of what each other has been through or is going through. And it's been a beautiful byproduct of PHA is the support groups that have naturally come together and support each other through this. And any community based group uh, within the freedom movement, I feel that comes together you're naturally becoming a support group for each other. You're naturally creating that. And I think it's essential moving forward. And not only that, I think that we've forcibly um, and intentionally and psychologically been pushed apart by the powers that be um, because they don't want us coming together. They don't want us talking. They don't want us supporting each other. They want us looking at them and looking at our screens and just doing what we're told. And actually it's almost an act of rebellion to come together with your neighbors and support each other. Um, and it's beautiful, it's beautiful. I mean, we've even had a few people message and say, I think this has saved my life because I didn't know what I was gonna do. I just felt so alone. I didn't know, I didn't feel empowered. I didn't know what action to take. I was so frustrated and I wanted to do something and I didn't know what to do. And through PHA and other groups, there's other amazing groups out there, not just PHA, but I know obviously personal experience that people have come and they've said I think it saved my life because God knows what I'd have done um, and so it's I think it's absolutely essential and also in terms of dealing with stress um, 
don't you know there's some amazing practitioners out there like yourself Rabito who can have really genuinely help with this really help people go through this um process safely and effectively um but just by being with other people and sharing your your thoughts and the load of of the weight you feel you're carrying you're automatically going to start I would imagine releasing some of that stress and starting to let it go and process it and let it go um which is so key right now because I don't know if you agree with the analogy, but I think if we uh, if we are feeling good and if we have helped ourselves and we've done some of the work, we are so much more effective in helping other people as well, rather than trying to deal with ourselves only half full when we can actually be more effective if we've dealt with our own trauma and our own stress and so forth. Would you agree with that? Absolutely. What is it before you put the oxygen mask yeah that's what yeah. they go to isn't it in the air, yeah. in an airplane if there's an accident put you know if yeah. you're going down make sure you put it on, on yourself before you try to help anyone else um i mean my, my motto is we free ourselves within and um i i really believe that you t- well you talked about the phases so i'd be interested to know yes. what you what you see those phases are but uh and, and it's interesting because when you speak to different people and like within the cpn mentors we've talked about you know these four uh, these phases and we always come up with four and i think even in the shamanic traditions it's four there seems to be kind of universally four so i don't know if you've got more than four or less than four but my four are that first of all you realize that the world is not the way that you thought it was. So you have to go through that cognitive dissonance and accept the reality as it is. The second one is then the doom and gloom phase where we start we start putting the, the join, going down the rabbit holes, joining the dots together, finding out that, you know, that this has been going on for a really long time. And our conclusion is we're all screwed. Like there's absolutely no chance that we can do anything about this. And it's really interesting because I was talking to someone the other day about the, I've just written it down. It was the Cartman drama triangle, because I just know it is the drama triangle, but it's actually Cartman who started this. It's the persecutor, the rescuer and the victim. And so we can go into this, this, and this means that we've still got trauma that we need to deal with. And I, I find it fascinating because the victim would be, we're all doomed. There's nothing we can do about it anyway the rescuer or the savior would be suffering for all the children, for example, that are being vaccinated or, um, you know, wanting to save the world, wanting to help absolutely everybody at the benefit, at the detriment of our own health. And then the other one is the persecutor is, you know, wanting revenge, wanting all these people hanged, things like this. And so, the, and this is part of, of many different therapy modalities. Um, and the thing is that there's nothing wrong with having any of those, but the, but the end goal should be, for example, if you're a savior, the end goal is not for you to save those people, but it's for you to enable them or empower them to be able to save themselves. Themselves, yeah. Yeah. And, um, and so basically when we get rid of that when we when we do the inner work when we look at the trauma and we release the stress and we get ourselves into a place of balance then we can uh, go into these situations like creating health hubs or food and farming hubs where we want to get directly involved with the farmers and things like this we can do all of this from a place which is uh you know like a balanced state um yeah, I mean, there's other words for it, but it's kind of this, you're in this balanced state where basically what it is, is that you are not reacting to your identity is not being challenged. You're not reacting to different people that disagree with you. And so you can stay in this space where you can, when you, when you deal with the, when you do the trauma work or release the stress, then it's also easier for us to communicate with other people to discuss to debate to share different ideas to 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 consider that we might be wrong to have a more of a humble humbling position 
where we realize, yeah, we know what's going on, but there's still loads more for us to, for us all to find out that human consciousness never, uh, uh, conscious evolution never stops. So we're always learning and we're always growing. So I think that's where doing the trauma work and, and, uh, and, and doing the work probably simultaneously, you know, you want to be getting involved with organizations like the PHA and the PFFA, getting, the, getting involved in some sort of community. So you've got that, that support, but doing the inner work is, is so important, so important. I mean, I've been doing the inner work for years and uh, only to such a degree because I've been doing it on my own. But then until COVID hit, I felt very alone in the world because quite frankly, if I talk to anyone about what I was noticing, they think I would start raving bonkers. So, but what is beautiful is there's now people like you and thousands of other practitioners out there who are awake and aware. And if you need to find them, go to the PHA practitioner directory, but are awake and aware where you're not going to be judged. You're not going to be, people think you can see people thinking she's completely lost it none of that is going to be taking place and actually this is so important a part of our healing as a nation as a people as 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 a world is that we have practitioners and and people like yourself Rabito, whereby we can reach out and we know we're not going to be judged for what our beliefs are and people will be able to understand or empathize with our position and i think it's exciting and everyone should feel really positive about this because trust me some years ago, when you're in the position where you're awake and there's barely anyone else in the world that you're aware of around you who are also awake, it's very, very difficult. And you have to almost feel like you're doing this kind of inner work on your own. Whereas now we're in the delightful, wonderful position where there are absolutely thousands of us out there who are awake and aware to, to what this reality looks like and so you can go out there and work on that with support now with practitioners who know what they're doing um and, and embrace that do that because actually so much that we're probably hanging on to from before covid even um you know and but we're if we're entering into this new world this beautiful world we don't really want to take too much baggage with us do we we want to kind of leave that behind and i think what we do with us on and, and our on ourselves, that's our own baggage. That's our own things. We need to decide what we offload and leave behind um, as we enter into, if you like, this new world whereby hopefully everyone's going to feel a lot lighter and a lot less stressed and life's going to be a lot fairer and kinder um, on us. But if you're if you're with someone and they're waking up and say they're not in a position right now to quickly access a practitioner or somebody else and they're in that denial phase. Is there anything that you can recommend people do, say it's a loved one, uh, bar encouraging them to come to a, somebody like yourself who knows how to help uh, with this? Is there anything we can do to make this process easier for others or do they have to go through this process to its, to its full extent to come through the other side? What are your thoughts on that? Well, my first, the, the, my, I can just, okay, for that, I can just go, I, I can just go by my own experience, really. So okay. I, I did loads of inner work also. Um, for me, the big, the big, uh, what I call the awakening, because there's many and, the, you know, and we can also argue about the word awakening, but that realization that things are not quite the way that we thought they were was 9-11 for me. Right. And I watched I watched two two planes go into three two towers and bring down three at free fall speed. And I just thought that doesn't that's not right. That just it's not possible. <laughs> it's like literally not possible. No. And then and then we were looking for Bin Laden in the caves of Afghanistan. Apparently he got this like James Bond network in the caves yeah, 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 yeah. with Wi-Fi and everything. Um, and I'm currently living in a in a in a, a house here that's uh, 800 years old, and it's got big concrete walls, and the Wi-Fi won't go through the walls. So I don't know how they managed to do it in the kit. Well, they didn't because they didn't hey, find it. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. But anyway, it just didn't make sense. So I, also, it's been a while for me, like you know, around 2001, and so I went down the rabbit holes and and, and went through this whole process then, and uh, but still community because when you when you do the inner work, you then you still need to go and, you know, you find groups that are doing different, uh, you know, for me, meditation. So I went and found groups that were doing meditation and amazing. Yeah. Found people there. 
Um, but but if you're dealing with somebody who is still, are we talking about now people that have not gone through that cognitive dissonance yet? Yeah. So they're just wait. They're just going. Hang on a minute. Something ain't right, and I can't put my. No, the government wouldn't do that. With that that real initial stage when something pennies just starting to drop, but they're no, I can't. I can't see the government wouldn't do that. You know, they're still in that denial kind of phase, but they can see something ain't right. Well, the first thing that's important when you when when we talked about this before, like when when you or me, when we get out of an abusive relationship is to speak our truth. Yeah. And uh, Matthias Desmet says the same thing, you know, when he talks about mass formation or mass hypnosis, which okay. is another one that we could talk about why that's not hypnosis. But uh, he says also, you know, the most important thing is to speak your truth. Yeah. So we do need to, to speak our truth. But from my experience it's being an example so like being an example of somebody who's not afraid to not get the jab be an example of somebody who's not afraid of of a virus um you can only be an example it doesn't work as i'm sure you've experienced as well at some point when you start throwing them all the information and the studies and all of that never works no, it just turns there's a huge off. temptation to but don't do it people can't cope yeah it just it just switch off they're not interested yeah. it's like if so if you've got someone who's super sporty come over to you and tell you that you need to do more exercise the only thing you're going to do is go and have a beer it's like <laughs> you <laughs> you don't want to hear it if, you, if it's no. not what you're believing at that moment but I had a really, really interesting, uh, uh, it was the first exchange in quite a long time because I don't go around trying to kind of wake people up anymore. But if somebody asks me, I'll tell them exactly what I think. And there was a doctor that I was talking to here the other day. And uh, she was saying, oh, you know, I met some of those crazy people that think that our freedoms are being taken away. And uh, they must feel really silly now because, uh, you know, COVID's over and all that worrying that they did for nothing. And um, and I just said to her, well, I actually don't agree with you. And I think that they're right. And I think our freedoms are being taken away. And what I said to her was like, I can um, share with you um, some of the information that I've got, if you're interested. And then you can either look at that information and decide that there's a flaw in it, in the argument, or you can look at it and you can accept it as objective truth. But yeah. if you agree with me after I show you this information, it is going to change your worldview and you're not going to see things the same way anymore. And so going back to, you know, when you've done the inner work, when you're not when your identity is not being challenged, you can you can talk to somebody in a very calm way. You don't react. You don't get angry. And uh, and then she said to me, I'm not interested because it must be a very sad and depressing place to believe that you can't trust the institutions. And what that said to me was, actually, was how wonderful are human beings? Because what that made me think was, she's such a kind, loving, trusting person that she can't believe that the institutions or people at the top of this, as I call it, the archaic pyramid, would be so cruel as to deliberately do things to harm others. So it's actually her goodness which is stopping her from- I agree. I've asked myself this a few times, you know, because you do end up having, I don't know, philosophical conversations in your head sometimes, I think. And I, I think there's a real innocence to people. I don't know if innocence is the right word. I want to say purity. Some, there's something very white um clean in that respect like a white sheet of those people who just can't believe there's that level of evil because they're probably so good in themselves or try to be so good in themselves that for them to accept that there are people out there who can be so awful is too much and they don't want to see it they don't want to look at it because they don't want to believe that there can be that nastiness from certain people in this world and in, in my mind, it almost makes them very, very, I don't, I don't want to say young and naive because that sounds patronising, but certainly there's a purity, a childlike purity, if you like, to that line of thinking, um, which I hope 
makes me more empathetic to their position right now, which I'm not going to lie. I've spent many a year saying such things as like, bloody idiots, seriously, wake up. Are you stupid? In my head. And actually, that serves no one particularly well. We don't get any resolution from that whatsoever. Um, whereas it's much easier to empathise for me if I look at that goodness within them and the fact that they just don't want to see the evil because they can't believe there's that level of evil because their mind just doesn't want to go there. Um, yeah, it's something I've thought about quite a bit, actually. Yeah. Yeah, I don't, I don't think that that's why everybody doesn't see the wood through the trees is that right <laughs> yeah, for the trees that's it yeah that's the one um i think other people perhaps know you know well other other people it's maybe it's more of a fear than a than a than i just can't believe it because because people are you know people are good hearted but this 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 particular doctor that i know she's such a nice kind sharing lovely person yeah. um and uh um, so yeah, so I, I, I bet the, the thing that I always tell myself is that because of course, like when you go through these phases, um, those oh yeah, so I don't know if I finished the stages. So the 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 first one is uh, you, 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 the cognitive dissonance. Second is you go down the rabbit holes. We're all screwed. And then I then I say you know then we then we reclaim our health. We take back our power. So that's the inner work, sorting ourselves out. And then the final stage is how can I contribute. And probably it's not one after the other. There's a kind of, a, they overlap. Blending. But, yeah. um, uh, but what I was going to say was, yeah, um, is that, I'm trying to find what I was going to say now. <laughs> Sorry, I tend to just jump in with things sometimes and distract. <laughs> I get a bit excited. No, I've lost I mean, it. It'll come back to me. No, really. it'll, co it'll come. It'll come back, you know. Um, yeah, for me, it was always denial. And then there was a level of acceptance that, okay, something isn't right I'll accept that then it was either a fear or sadness based on the reality of drawing on them through research or like you say the rabbit holes whatever way it might be that actually that's really a kick in the gut that what I believed all those years maybe that isn't how things are and what I'm looking at is actually worse than I thought this world would be so then comes that more of that acceptance. And then there's sometimes quite a level of anger and frustration and annoyance. And, you know, you've got to deal with those emotions as well. But what I found is the best thing for me when I was at that stage was to funnel that energy, that anger, that frustration, because there was so little I could do at the time. There was so little I could do to make a practical difference as far as I could see it to the elements that were the problem. What I could do was funnel my energy into finding solutions and that's where I, I feel that the likes of having things like PHA, PFFA and the other organizations out there those grassroots authentic groups that are coming up with solutions that is where you can actually funnel your energy and thus make a difference and that's what we all want to do is be empowered to make a difference for good I think isn't it and so whilst that process goes through I'd like to think that the majority of us will get to that place where rather than sitting in our anger and frustration, which we can do, A, address what is that achieving, but B, actually, where can I best serve others? Where can I best serve others? Because ultimately we serve ourselves when we serve others. Where can I funnel my energy into creating something that those bad guys aren't going to like me doing? So in no way or shape or form am I, you know, helping them out, but I'm actually helping the people out in my community. I'm helping those people around me. I'm helping those find a way forward and create the new. And that's why I pummel so much energy into people getting involved at that community level, very much like you're saying, is because we'll heal ourselves as well as help heal other people around us. Yeah, I agree with you. And it's actually really interesting that you say that, because I, I normally talk about the third stage being kind of reclaiming health. Um, but uh, probably the whole process is a reclaiming health process right from the beginning, right from that cognitive distance. And um Actually, what happened to me was the same thing was I, I did the research. I saw that, you know, I, I went down the rabbit holes, as I say, as I say, it. Um, came to the conclusion that, you know, that there's nothing we can, you know, we're, we're probably screwed at this point um, and went through the anger, used the terminology like sheeple and, you know, all the, all the derogatory terms towards people. Yeah. 
and actually didn't like humans very much. I actually went through mm. a, a, a phase where I thought, I love planet Earth. I love the animals. I love the plants. But people are just, you know, they're just a problem. Um, and then, funnily enough, I was on a, I used to be very, I, I lived a nomadic lifestyle before COVID and COVID really changed my lifestyle there. But I was, I was, on, a, uh, I was on a beach in Sri Lanka helping this woman set up, it was beautiful, yeah, setting up uh, an Airbnb, helping. And uh, this guy turned up with his wife and two children. And, uh, and, he's, and, and I was very depressed at this point. And he said, I've just spent the last five years focusing on all the solutions. And I sat down with him and he went through all the different organizations that he was aware of at that time that were focusing on the solutions. And what he made me realize is that that's also a reality. All of those organizations, all of those thousands and thousands of people that were busy trying to, you know, maybe potentially millions that were busy trying to create a better world, um, were also reality. And if we focus on that, we feel good. And if we focus on the problem, we feel bad. And then going back to the abusive relationship, if we focus on that, on the solutions, then we're actually moving in the right direction. And if we look the other way, then we're just, as you said, in that grief and that anger. So actually, when I say reclaiming my health, I might change that third one now. (laughs) Yeah. Okay. Okay. I, I think even when we've come through this, I don't think it ever stops though. I don't know. I've been on this journey a long time. My healing journey will never stop I mean it's interesting what I said about disliking people I went through a phase couldn't stand people couldn't stand people at all and it took me a long time to because I was speaking to some if you like some old hat conspiracy theorists a number of years ago there's only a small group of us we you know the internet wasn't what it is now and so forth so there was only a small group of us and each and every one of us confessed that we'd actually gone full circle so we'd start here and oh you know the evil gap but guys are bad they want to kill us all you know awful awful and you go through your process and you go through your process and you're going through and through and through and through and at one point or another you'd go through to come to a point where you're like maybe the bad guys haven't got it wrong maybe the bad guys haven't got it wrong because quite frankly humanity's stupid blah 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 and you you, you go off on one and, and, and all the rest of it and I had to reconcile this with myself because I didn't want to be one of those people that thought that. I I just did not. Um, and what I got my head around was actually I don't hate people. I don't dislike hate people. What I hate are societal structures that we are living within, but by working with it, we are supporting. And that's not the people. That's the system. And yeah. I think it's important to remember that whilst we are angry with people for not waking up or we're angry with people for feeling a certain way or aligning with a certain political party that we just can't understand. Actually, it isn't the individuals. It is the structure of society that has been laid out for us by those ones that they consider themselves the top of the tree by those people decades decades if not centuries has been leading up to this and it's been done by design it's been done by control mechanisms but what is beautiful is that people are waking up to it and we are so passionate about building the new and about creating a new way forward taking down those old structures and those people that currently are still in belief of what they're seeing they won't be for much longer they won't it's going to change and they're going to all become aware of things going on that they didn't see before. And actually, it's really important that we're there to support them because we're all on the same team. Ultimately, when I speak to people who've taken the jab or done it, they've done it from a place of love. They've done it for a majority have done it from a place of love and they didn't want to hurt others. And I think it's important for us to remember that actually most decent people are people are decent people. You know, they're decent human beings. And now is an exciting opportunity for us all to come together over the next couple of years um ignore those hideous power structures well they're, they're crumbling anyway they're going to continue to crumble and so forth and funnel our energy into each other and building the new and it isn't the people it's society it's what's been created would you agree with that or would you absolutely. have another angle on that uh, no absolutely yeah it's uh i mean f- few things what the, the the thing i was trying to remember before <laughs> is we <laughs> have to remember now. I know I'm good at I'm good at connecting the past to the present actually, <laughs> is we have to remember that 
uh, many people woke up before us and many people are going to wake up after us. And so when we were at the point when we thought that every, that, that, we, that we hadn't realized, we hadn't had our awakening moment yet, whenever that was, there was loads of people before us that thought that you were a sheep. So, you know, we, I think we have to just, we just got to believe, I, I believe it, that it's a process, everybody's on their own journey and everybody is, you know, will, will wake up at the point when they need to, or when it's the right moment for them. And for some people, it's gonna be more difficult because obviously right now, the old system is collapsing, crumbling now. And that, that's why they're ramping it up. That's why they're not hiding it anymore because it's, it's a la last ditch effort because they can see how powerful human, how powerful we are, and the potential that we have to take away the power from them. So they're they're ramping it all up now, yeah. and that's going to mean that it's going to be difficult for those people that haven't realised what's going on yet, because at some point um, there's going to be loads of people all at once that just suddenly snap out of it because um, because it's going to get bad yeah. enough. But the, the thing bombs is, are going to drop, as it were. Yeah. But as it gets, you know, yin and yang, polar opposites, as it gets worse, it's also getting better. All of the all of the amazing things that are happening are also ramping up at the same time. And as far as the system goes, I've said for a long time, the problem is the system. So yeah. when we focus on climate change or even if we focus on covid or if we focus on digital uh, central bank, digital currencies or whatever, it's actually diverting our attention from the main problem which is the which is the system itself yeah which is there to manipulate and control us and we need to just walk away from that and build something else and the 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 last thing i wanted to say i'm going to lose it now about <laughs> the system <laughs> yeah cuz i'm glad it's not just me my love i do it all the time i'm one of those that walks into a room and i'm literally like Yep, came in here for something. Can't remember what it is. So I do it myself. Whilst you're thinking, I think it's it's interesting you said that because I actually tweeted about this this weekend. Um, I said, I think that this year is the year of the awakening. It's also the year of revelations in terms of the news that will come out, the, the information, the truth that will come out. And it's really important that we are the safety nets that help to catch the people because there's going to be large numbers of them. It's going to be happening. You think you've had it bad. They are going to be waking up Boom, boom, boom in your face. It's going to be coming at them left, right and centre. And we've actually got to be really empathetic to that because it's going to be a lot. And it's really important that we are there as the safety nets because what we don't want to risk is a sort of societal collapse situation. So actually, whilst that might serve their needs in terms of having that chaos, it doesn't really serve us well. And not only are we going to be doing those that wake up a, a favour, we're going to be doing ourselves and society around us a favour by helping to catch them if they look like they're going to fall, helping them guide through it, you know, talking to them, showing ways they can use their energy to create something beautiful and something wonderful and positive. Because if they wake up and they've just been watching the BBC and doing, you know, listening to their MP and so on and so forth and believing everything they've been told, they're going to nearly crash potentially because it's going to be a lot. And what they need to be able to see is it's not just the NHS crumbling. Oh my gosh, we haven't even got this. We haven't got that. We haven't got that. Now, actually, look what we've been building. Look, it's awesome. There's new stuff here and it's wonderful. And the people have created this and you are safe and you are held and you are cared for. And we're in this together <clears throat> and getting those messages out rather than one of, I told you so. However tempting that might be, Actually, it doesn't really serve us as, 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 a, as a unit, if you like, as a community. Um, I think the messaging has to be one like, yeah, all right, they got us all at one point or another. Now, check out what we're doing. It's awesome. Do you want to come along and get involved? You know, take that kind of road, if you like, than rather take the higher road, if you like, rather than the one where we do feel like sometimes going, told you, because actually, overall, that's not going to serve anyone well. No, and those people that are thinking about, you know, what can I do? Like, what, what can little me do? What can I possibly do? Well, you know, and I said before, we're all mentors. You know, we've all got something to offer. Well, what we can all do is that we can help people through this transition. Yeah. And, 
that's something that we can all do. We can be there for people as they as they go through this process, remembering that we went through it once as well. Um, and it fits in very nicely with what I didn't say because I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> go for it. Yeah, which is also the the um, the amount of manipulation that is required from those people the you know from the system and those people that are really at the top that are managing it all the, um, the just the sheer amount of it actually shows just how powerful we are because yes um, it's so incredibly sophisticated and um going quickly very quickly into uh, mass formation which is also called mass hypnosis the reason that mass hypnosis doesn't do hypnotherapy many favors is that mass hypnosis is actually, first of all, and I wrote this down because I wanted to squeeze this one in. First of all, you need to isolate people. So they need to feel isolated. The second one is that they need to feel meaning that they don't have any meaning. So they need to feel meaningless. Then they need to have a constant um something to focus on. So this is where the hypnosis comes from. Some some anxiety or threat that comes from a, a constant fear, a constant threat to focus on. And then as a consequence, you need to start feeling frustrated and angry. And then the final thing is that the authorities give you the solution. So yeah. the, just, just the amount of manipulation that's required to, to get us to behave the way that they want, that to do things that we wouldn't ordinarily do, to buy things that we wouldn't ordinarily buy, is massive and i think that just goes to show you know that that we're not easily controlled actually i've had to work very hard at it and take years and years and years to get to this point to mold us in this way and they've come at it from all angles and the biggest reason is and this is the joy of it they ultimately fear us realizing they ultimately fear us becoming aware of the situation and the biggest threat i think to them isn't necessarily and i could be wrong here i'm giving this much thought but this is a knee-jerk thought it isn't that we will stand up and and become violent or aggressive or anything else i think the biggest fear is the fact that we make them null and void we create a world where they're not needed we don't need to listen to them we, we can completely ignore everything you're saying and it has zero impact on our lives and um i mean i do think that they will be out of the picture before we're fully at that stage but hey let's head in that direction because they can't do anything with that they can't do anything with that and we're taking away their power by literally ignoring them it's like bullies you know, they'll keep prodding you for a bit. They'll keep going for a bit. But ultimately, if you just ignore them and walk away from them and let them have no impact on your life, they they, they are powerless. They're utterly powerless. So actually, it's far wiser for us to funnel our energy into building the new and having a good time doing that and ignoring what they're saying because you're just eradicating the need for them. Their point becomes, yeah. a, you know, a moot point, basically. But isn't it an exciting time to be alive, Rabito? Isn't it just exciting and empowering? And there's so much that's coming and so much that's being done. And people like yourselves are providing incredible, I'm going to say services. That's not what I mean, though. The word service doesn't do it duty. Um, it, it's an incredible offering that you guys can bring to help others through this and to, to support them on this journey of healing. Um, and I personally, as Catherine McBean, can recommend getting in touch with Rabito. And I'm sure there's very other fantastic, authentic uh, people out there, healers out there who can help you on your journey. Um, do go and check out the PHA directory if you are looking for somebody to support you. Um, someone like Rabito can work remotely, um, which is fantastic. So you don't need to be in the same vicinity um, in order to get some support from Rabito. But I would recommend go and look into it because um, it's going back to that mask thing. Hey, we want to help others. And We've all got a role to play in helping others, but let's make sure we help ourselves and get ourselves in a really good place um, to start with. So, um, Rabito, is there anything else you'd like to bring up today uh, before we end that you'd like to pass on? And I would say to people, do go and check out um, the Conscious People's Network, um, particularly if you need a little bit of a lift, because um, there's always it's just it's just positive. It's just fantastic information on there. But is there anything else you'd like to bring up today, my love? Yeah, I'd just like to first of all, I'd like to say that we also have sessions um 
uh, you know, we run sessions through Telegram. So it is also, well, it's on Zoom, but the sessions are advertised on, on the Conscious People's Network, as does the People's Health Alliance with your, is it Wednesday well-being sessions? Well-being Wednesdays and stuff. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and actually I'm doing a, a presentation soon as well for the PHA. Amazing. So, so that's Fantastic. great. But um, but yeah, so so you can get online support from the other mentors through the Conscious People's Network as well. Amazing. Um, and I just wanted to quickly say, first of all, about those people that we just need to walk away from, you know, the ones that have tried to manipulate us all these years. I just I always take this analogy, you know, if you were in a, in a smaller community, say, I don't know, 30 people and one person said, oh, I've got the idea, you know, I'm going to be the king and you're yeah. all going to work for me and then you give me money and then I'll live off that. Then you'll say, all right, goodbye. Not interested. So that's yeah. the solution. We're not interested. Go in the yeah. other direction. And you mentioned also, uh, Catherine, about um, it, when, when those people all do go through that awakening process or whatever we want to call it, and then they need to be held. And you said, well, you know, look, we've got this other stuff going on. Come over here. That's also the solution that Dr. Mateus Desmet talks about with mass formation. And uh, others also have talked about is that we need to um, not hide our truth. We need community. But the other thing that we need to do is that we need to um, present a better alternative so that these people, go, when, when they, I don't know whether he's right or not, but he says about 40% of the population follow the crowd. So, and, uh, and then he says about 30 kind of see what's going on and 30% um uh are kind of stuck in this as he calls it kind of well mass formation i don't think he uses hypnosis but anyway so that 40 percent where at the moment they're following the crowd if he's right you know in in the system that we've got if we present something which is better and especially also once they realize what's going on if we've got something yeah. there that's better then they've got a place to go yeah the, the final thing i'll probably just squeeze in because we didn't get time to talk about it. Is oh, gosh, sorry. It's flown by. I could talk for you for hours. We'll I know, I know. Because we, we, yeah, because it's, well, it's fantastic because we, we, we're like just agreeing on and have such a similar mindset on so many things. But um, the, the science behind focusing on, on the glass half full, the science and focusing on the positive, it's just, it, there's so much of it. And sometimes when I was doing COVID positive news, people would say, yeah, but you know, it's not rainbows and unicorns. You know, we've got to also, acknowledge you know all this bad stuff that's going on so like i continually say you know don't ignore the problems but focus on the solutions because yes. if you focus on yes. the, you focus on the glass half full and practice nurturing yourself you know what is your knee-jerk reaction when you read some news can you find the positive in that news um learning to to to, to develop this glass half full perspective it has so many benefits also, increases longevity, reduces heart attacks by 50%, according to one study, um, you know, which is very relevant right now. And I'm not saying mm. that, you know, a, a glass half full perspective is going to fix all the world's problems, but it has massive positive effects for the body, for the mind, and also for us to be able to communicate and relate to each other as well. And I think it just makes day-to-day -day living more manageable and more fun and, you know, I, I, I'm truly energized a lot of the time and I'm generally a very positive person, but I'm also a human being. So, you know, I have a negative moment. So I have, don't get me wrong. I love my moments where I'm like, oh, so angry. Maybe I see an article or something that just infuriates me. And I'm not going to lie. I'm not all sweetness and light when those situations happen at all. But what I've learned to do is, OK, I see it. I address it. I accept it. OK, it's there. But then I take myself off and do something positive, something that I enjoy, something that lifts and raises my vibration. And as a result, how I see that changes. The anger dissipates and I see it for what it is, which is probably pathetic and just, you know, riled up bits of propaganda. But so I'm not there yet. So saying to I just want people listening to think, well, you know, I can't just suddenly fine. Actually, take away from take yourself away from the situation. And, and do something positive, do something proactive or do something, you know, is going to put a smile on your face and how you'll see that will change. 
it will it will flip. Um, that's just for me personally how I'm learning to manage those things because I can sometimes get a little bit hurt up. I'm not going to lie about it. Uh, passionate, I think, is what my friends say, but. I'm learning that actually that doesn't serve me to stay in that state of mind. And I take myself off and I change my own state of mind by doing something positive um, and flipping the switch on how I see it. Um, but we're all growing, aren't we? We're all learning. It's all part of the journey. No, it's a massive tool. It's a really, really good tool. I use it also in the hypnotherapy. If you, It's about changing the perspective. So if you, yeah. if you go away and you do something which raises your vibration, when you look back at that same thing afterwards, you're you're not looking at it from the from from the perspective of anger and yeah. but of course I also get angry it's not like I walk around happy about everything but the <laughs> but the <clears throat> the one that got me the one that got me really angry was when Trudeau froze the bank accounts that made me furious yeah um but yeah I bet but um but the thing is that uh well, the work, and it was say with meditation, the work is you can see that anger, you can see that you're angry, but you don't get lost in it. When people get yeah. really angry and, uh, and when somebody kind of goes into a state of rage, for example, then often afterwards, they just they, they, they talk about how it wasn't me. So you, yeah. you can get you can get lost in that emotion and uh, and then you're out of control. So yeah. it's 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 learning a, a technique which works for you. So that when you when you go into those states, you can see that this is happening and then you can take action, as you said, yeah. either to go and do something else so that it, it goes down again. You dilute it or a, another technique would be to, to 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 actually just face it and allow it to come up. But just don't um, don't go into it, you know, to kind of observe it. That's the meditation side. Yeah. And then and then it will it will just dissipate and disappear by itself yeah but, okay. yeah it's all fascinating Rabito. i've no doubt you and i are going to talk again in a few months time as things change because i think this year things are going to move very very quickly i think we're going to see things develop very quickly i think you know it'd be great for us to reconvene and see what changes has happened and um should, is there anything else we should be discussing <clears throat> in terms of how we look moving forward to help those as well that are going through their awakening but thank you so much for your time today Rabito. speaking to you is never dull it's always so fascinating and um i would encourage people go and have a look at conscious people's network if you're looking for a bit of support and help do reach out to Rabito. um i'm sure i'd be more than happy to connect and see if there's anything you can do to help you um and in the meantime Rabito, thank you so much for your time today my love this has been absolutely fascinating can't wait to see you on the pha presentation and uh yeah please do come back in a few months time and let's see if anything's shifted thank you so much i'll just share robito.info will take you to the hypnosis it you'll you can also it, it takes you to a link tree so you've got like a bio it, it will take you to the hypnosis or to the conscious people's network or to my Substack where i'm publishing my podcast as well brilliant and send absolutely. us the details of your Substack because the rest of it we've got lined up to put in the notes guys so if you need to have a look look in the notes you're going to find all the links there and we'll make sure that Rabito's Substack is added to that Thank you so much, Catherine. And yes, we should also say that it is fantastic what's happening in the world right now. And, yeah. um, you know, and as things get crazier, things are only going to get better as well. Yeah, 100%. 100%. I will speak to you soon, my friend. Take care and all the best. Thank you so much. Thank you too. Bye bye. Thank you. 